everyone. This is section two on a general and condensed suicide prevention brief um, for the current global pandemic situation. The next slide I wanna show you in suicide prevention, and again, I can get you a graphic that perhaps you can read a little bit better, um, is this general spiraling down behavior that we might see. So the first one is a history. This means that I have maybe had suicide attempts in my past or I maybe came from a uh, difficult past and the Navy was my ticket out. So I might have had domestic abuse as a child. I might have suffered from isolation or neglect, or I might have um, had issues in my life that make, um, that make striving and dealing with stress more difficult for me. Um, then we have the ongoing stressors. The Navy is generally like the pressure cooker that will take people and either form them into diamonds or maybe turn them into an explosion. So the ongoing stressors might be I have a limb due, I might have had a bad evaluation, I might have gotten in trouble and had disciplinary action at work. Um, those ongoing stressors that the Navy just generally has, even a deployment or a workup or something that where I need to be separated from my family. And then I'm, I have a um, disrupted social network. So I'm not, a, I'm not close to my friends and family. I um, am away from them. I finally got into a group I enjoy in Virginia Beach and then the Navy shipped me off to San Diego. I'm just not with the social network, can't lean on the people that I that I used to. And then we start to see some of those warning signs that we talked about earlier, the isolation, the substance abuse, um, the reckless behavior. And then our judgment factors are impended because maybe we're not sleeping, we are having a substance abuse problem, um, we are engaging in uh, allowing ourselves to get our judgment clouded by maybe engaging in like social activities that wouldn't do that, like people that spend too much time on our social networking sites and maybe aren't getting enough face-to-face -face time with other people. And then the access to lethal means, and then there's a very small window where we can actually intervene on that, on that service member's behalf. So it's not usually just one factor, it's usually several factors all put in together, um, put into the pressure cooker that is the, U the Navy, and then the um, service member has, or family member just has an explosion. Um, so look for those types of behaviors. Um, the number one factor is usually relationship problems, and that's not always your intimate partner relationships. It could be that you're away from your children. It could be that you have had a parent die. It could be that people that you used to admire at your work situation have let you down or you've let your superiors down or your friends down. Um, so relationship problems are the number one factor, um, but they're usually not the only factor. There's usually several other factors that go into that related behavior. Now, let's talk about protective factors, things that can prevent us from suicide-related behaviors in ourselves and in those people around us. I like this slide because it talks about individual factors first. Um, these are the things that if you are regularly doing, you are kind of taking your vitamins, you're exercising your, your body, you are making yourself more able to handle stress and not experience um, suicide-related behaviors. Um, cognitive flexibility is one that we teach in some of our other classes. It's your ability to, to control your thoughts, to stop poor thinking patterns and pull ourselves towards thinking patterns that are good and positive and beneficial for us. Um, co coping skills and hobbies that are healthy for us. Um, and then maybe um, experiencing some emotional regulation. Um, that could also be um, as simple as saying, recognizing when you feel angry, upset, overwhelmed, and being able to express that to a loved one or someone who cares. It can be as simple as that, and it can be even more um, advanced so far as like seeking therapy, clinical therapy through Fleet and Family, Military One Source, the hospital, or all those other services that are available to you for free, which is a nice benefit, right? These are the command level protective factors. I like to talk about those as well because if you are in a command that doesn't have a general feeling of some of these, um, these factors, you're probably going to have a little bit more um, problems or suicide-related behaviors, okay? Um, 
One of the things that I like on here is making time for sleep and exercise. Um, gone are the days where we should be telling people that sleep is for when you die and only like the strong sleep for four hours at night. If you aren't getting a good night's sleep um, regularly or at least most of the time, um, this can uh, interrupt your thought patterns and it can re create mental problems as well as physical problems in your body. All right, so make sure you've checked this out and see if you have some of the individual factors and then make sure these command level protective factors are available. If they're not in your command right now, remember this for when you're a leader. This is something you might wanna implement later. So the next slide I have here is preventing suicide by focusing on resilience. I have another brief on stress resilience that you may have already seen, but make sure you check that out as well where we go a little bit more deeper into stress resilience and how that can help you. Um, some of the things that I wanna show here, again, we're showing that your social and family relations stay connected. If your family is not a healthy environment for you, it's okay to find family outside of the people that you were born into or people that you are um, biologically related to. Um, so realize that that's um, able, uh, important to remember as well. Deepening your sense of purpose, whether that's with the military or not, and then feeling a sense of belonging. The military is actually really um, unique in that it builds a lot of cohesion in the workplace. Um, I would say that's pretty rare if you go outside of the armed forces to find that sense of belonging and cohesion and a sense of having a very high purpose in what you do for work regularly. So make sure you foster that in your um, environment and those are some of the factors that are shown to lower suicide rates within commands and within groups. I'll see you for three. Bye.